Nowadays incredible results can be achieved in liver surgery. Our department in Barmbeck is one of the few centers of excellence for liver surgery in Germany. And Professor Oldhafer is a leading and unrivaled specialist in this medical field. For what tumors can liver surgery be performed? We mostly admit patients with secondary tumors, that is liver metastases. These are mainly colorectal cancer metastases that affect the liver. There are also primary liver tumors that develop directly from hepatocytes and bile duct cells. These include hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangiocellular carcinoma. This group includes various types of cancer that are usually operable. In addition there are a number of benign tumors such as focal nodular hyperplasia, FNH, which develops in women taking hormonal medications. Surgery is not always indicated for these tumors. Hemangiomas which are benign neoplasms that grow from the blood vessels of the liver. Adenomas and so on are also common in our practice. We operate on all of these types of tumors. The uniqueness of the liver is its ability to regenerate. Thanks to special surgical techniques we can perform interventions that seem impossible at first glance. For example if the size of the tumor to be removed is so large that the remaining part of the liver is too small to take over all the organs functions, we now have the ability to pre-grow this remaining part of the organ. This means that the surgeon divides the liver during the first operation, thus stimulating tissue regeneration. Then in a second operation the tumor is removed. So we have a lot of options in this area. Limitations to resection include liver failure due to cirrhosis, medication, inflammation or hepatitis and severe liver damage after chemotherapy. The decision to operate is always an individual one. However most patients benefit from promising surgical approaches with good prognosis and long-term results. Yes, it can. Care must be taken to ensure that the rest of the organ is tumor-free. It is impossible to stimulate the growth of hepatocytes while there is a tumor in the organ. This means that if metastases are found in the liver the metastases are removed first, and then the liver is divided. In this case the second part of the liver affected by the tumor is temporarily left until the next operation. Whenever required its blood supply may be blocked. After the metastases are removed the healthy lobe of the liver usually the left lobe, begins to regenerate. With sufficient liver tissue volume confirmed by imaging diagnosis and organ function tests, surgeons can proceed with the resection of the second lobe. This approach works in both theory and practice. My colleagues Professor Oldhafer and Dr. Wagner routinely perform pancreatic surgery. Most surgical interventions in this area are still performed using an open approach. Of course there are also minimally invasive techniques in pancreatic surgery. However robot-assisted pancreatic surgery is definitely the future. Why is that? The reason is that robotics allows for sutures to be applied so thinly and efficiently that it is impossible to achieve such a result with conventional open microscopic or minimally invasive techniques. This also makes it possible to approach such miniature structures as the pancreatic ducts and bile ducts to perform minimally invasive procedures. And the robotic device makes this possible. This kind of surgery is our specialty. Of course robotic surgery is still in the implementation stage. However it is already at a fairly advanced level. I am sure there will be big changes to it in the coming years. For now these surgical procedures require careful patient selection. Therefore the majority of patients currently undergo open surgery. In our department esophageal surgery is performed by abdominal surgeons. Thoracic surgeons do not participate in such operations. Of course there are related medical specialties but esophageal surgery remains within the competence of our doctors. All esophageal surgical procedures are now performed by Dr. Von Rittberg together with Professor Oldhafer. These operations are mainly for esophageal cancer. Surgical technologies in this area are developing rapidly. Almost all surgical procedures are performed with the robotic device because it allows us to operate in tight spaces much better than with the open technique. In the first stages this method was used only for operations on the abdominal organs. That is the robotic device assisted during operations in the abdominal cavity while the surgeon performed manipulations in the thorax using the open technique. Those days are gone and the robot can now be used in thoracic surgery as well. And all minimally invasive esophageal procedures are performed with its assistance and with high efficiency. Esophageal surgery is considered a complex category of interventions and the combination of different surgical approaches remains a major topic of discussion. I believe that the first priority is to remove the malignant tumor completely regardless of its location.
If the tumor is located relatively high in the rectum, and in Europe the lower 16 centimeters of the intestine are considered the rectum, that is in the upper and middle third, then we have no difficulty. The affected fragment is resected and the integrity of the intestine is restored. If the tumor is located in the lower third of the rectum the operation becomes more technically complex. If the tumor grows into the anal canal then the need for so-called intersphincteric resection cannot be excluded.